everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. And in case you don't know who I am yet, <laughs> I am Kay Thompson, a principal broker here at Best Real Estate Company. Um, I am so excited to bring you guys today's episode, the latest um, episode of the Best Real Estate Company's Friday Focus. And <clears throat> I want to just start by off by saying that um, I'm very grateful that last week we kept our episode um, under an hour. Um, that's always my hope to be able to try to do that. I just want these to be quick snippets for you guys to be able to, you know, partake in, review, ask any questions that you may have uh, with regard to them um, before. Um, and, uh, you know, well, after you've reviewed the information, but before you go and try to put that into those, the information that we're sharing into action, um, if you're not clear about it, um, and I try to bring you, um, information as long as, as well as Shanita, um, we do try to bring you information, like I said, that's going to be relevant. And so last week, um, I, um, took a big leap and said, that we weren't going to talk anymore about the NAR settlement and all the things that are going on with that. Um, and I am humbly having to eat my words this week. I do have um, several things that I do want to talk to you guys about. Um, I do want to focus on those things, but it is important for me um, and, and I'm sure all the other brokers that I work with here at BEST that we disseminate this information um, that's coming down the pike to us from NAR and from their attorneys um, in a way that um, is beneficial for you guys and in, in a way that protects us all. And so I had the pleasure today of going, um, I'll say the pleasure and the challenge <laughs> of going um, to the Memphis Area Association of Realtors. They called all the principal brokers um, over to have a discussion with us about these changes as they have, um, as they are being rolled out to share some information with us that I think I'm going to sh uh, that I think is important that I share with you guys and um, just to kind of clear up a few misconceptions that people might have about the changes and the transitions that we're going to have to make in order to remain compliant with our state um, and with um, the local boards. And so this meeting hopefully isn't going to be longer than just maybe 15 or 20 minutes um, because I'm really just going to talk about this. And then hopefully, hopefully next week um, we'll be able to um, talk about some of the other things that I wanted to um, bring to you today. I am going to bring them up. Um, just because I would love for you guys to go out and read ahead of time and get some perspective and then maybe um, come back and we can maybe have a discussion. I would love to see if um, anybody wants to talk about the subjects that I was going to talk about um, on next week's episode. You can be uh, on as a guest. And so um, the first thing that I want to do is uh, preface this by saying that um, I give kudos to Mar. Memphis Area Association of Realtors, which you, those of you who know me real well know it's kind of hard for me to give them kudos, but I do give them kudos um, for um, taking the leap and inviting the principal brokers over um, to have us discuss with them um, how some of these changes that they've made in, re in relation to um, the lawsuit are affecting us in the, in the field. Um, they still have questions themselves. I'll be honest and say that they don't that they don't know the answers to yet. Um, we were um, um, there in the room with a, a group of attorneys um, that are real estate attorneys local, and we also had an attorney um, or representative representing the attorneys for NAR um, on Zoom, and so um, that that nice person was there. Um, to answer questions for us as best as she could. Here are my main takeaways from um, this uh, meeting. I'm not going to go into all the little minute details about it, but here are the main takeaways. The first one is, is that every brokerage 
um, in Tennessee at some point. I don't know how they're going to do this. I didn't ask. This is just what came out. Um, that every brokerage is probably going to be audited. They said there's like a 98% chance that every brokerage in Tennessee is going to be audited just to see how we handle these buyer's representation agreements um, and, and, the, and the changes that um, have come about since August 17th. Um, there are, and so they gave us that heads up. Um, I uh, did send you guys the forms um, for Tennessee um, that where there were changes or additions. Um, I strongly, strongly urge you guys to read those documents. And I strongly, strongly urge you to um, explain those documents thoroughly and in detail to your clients. If you cannot explain them, if you don't have the proper verbiage or you feel like you don't, please reach out to me um, at the office um, so that I can help you with that. The main thing is that in our buyer's representation agreements, if we do not have a um, specified amount in there that we're going to be charging the buyers, then... Um, we definitely need to be amending our contracts, our buyer's rep agreements to add compensation um, because what they're specifically going to be looking for is to make sure that our compensation that we say to the buyers that they're going to pay us matches up to the compensation that we actually got paid. In the event that you have negotiated a fee with your buyer and then you show a property where the seller is paying more than that, you have to go back to your buyer and you have to let them know that the seller is paying a higher percentage or a higher amount than what you negotiated with the buyer. You have to make them aware of that and they have to sign off knowing and acknowledging that they were made aware. If you turn in a compensation agreement um, or or um, or any type of agreement that's that that references compensation, and the compensation that you earn is more than what you stated you were going to earn um, to your buyer. So you have a buyer's rep agreement that says I'm going to earn two percent of the purchase price and commissions, and then you get paid a commission of three percent. Um, if there is no documentation in your files that show that you shared that with your client, which is the buyer, and that your client was aware of that, then you could be in trouble. So make sure that A, every purchase or not purchase, but every buyer's rep agreement has some sort of compensation amount in it. And B, when you are compensated at the end of your transaction in terms of commissions, make sure that that matches up to your buyer's rep agreement. And if it doesn't, you need to have an amendment that explains that you explain the change of compensation to your buyer. The second thing is facilitators are able to be paid, but facilitators have to also list specifically the things that they're doing to be paid for. Because as we uh, need to remember, a facilitator is not representing the person that they're doing the facilitation for. Um, you can be a listing agent and a facilitator for a, a non-represented client, a buyer, and uh, vice versa. And you can be paid. You just have to specify specifically what they're paying you for and what that amount is. There is um, also, um, they also had questions regarding you know, I, hey, I have a buyer, I have a buyer's rep agreement with this buyer. Um, I'm out of town and I ask an agent from another firm to show this client. As long as you have an agreement with a buyer, um, then that is fine. As long as you have stated in writing to that buyer that someone else may show. If you are um, um, working with a designated agency agreement, uh, for a buyer and you have 
put your name there as the as the agent that best is designated to work with that person. Um, all you really need to do is just go back to your buyer and and say, hey, you know, I'm sure your buyer knows you're going to be out of town. Hey, this person is going to show you while I'm out of town. Just have them sign an amendment to your buyer's rep representation agreement and you, you're good to go. Um, open houses. If you are hosting an open house, um, everyone that comes to the open house, if they are unrepresented, they are free game. Um, you do not have to have a buyer's representation agreement for the, for a potential client to walk through your open house. However, if that person comes to you and asks you questions about the property in terms of how to make an offer, negotiate a deal, and you begin to give them that sort of advice, then you are moving into the realm of either facilitator or um, representing them. And so before you give them any definite and concrete information, you need to make sure that you have an agreement in place um, to either facilitate with them or, or represent them. Um, the other thing that they talked about was fines. So we cannot have any um, anything in the MLS that um, could be construed as the agent is offering a type of compensation. So we cannot put into the uh, MLS a compensation uh, agreement. So the cooperation agreement between two agents totally filled out. We cannot do that. You can put a blank compensation agreement in there with your signature on it that has nothing else filled out um, other than, you know, the name of your company, the company address, things of that nature. But the part about what you're going to pay an agent cannot be filled out. So I suggest you guys just don't do that. They are going to go and look back at files. So anything that's entered in the MLS um, that from August 17th going forward, if you have mentions of compensation or things uh, that, that reference that or allude to that in the uh, MLS, uh, and, and what I mean, allude, I mean very clear things like you can't write in the um, realtor remarks, agent will co-op. You cannot put that in the MLS. You cannot put agent will co-op in the MLS. You can't put... Uh, anything like that um, that would refer or make someone think that you're um, trying to negotiate in there. Um, so I want everyone to be clear that uh, they're giving us a grace period. It was already this week. <laughs> so next week, anything that goes into the MLS or anything that's been put in there um, since August 17th, they're going to start the process to review. If they see com comments, um, or anything that alludes to compensation, um, they are going to give you a, a grace. The first instance, the second instance, there'll be a fine is $500. The third instance, um, it'll be $1,000. Um, and then the fourth instance, if, if you get that far, is, is also going to be $1,000 and you run the risk of uh, being suspended from the MLS. Um, and so, um, make sure that you're not doing that. However, we can on our signs, we can um, on our personal real estate websites and things of that nature state that we, we, we will co-op. Um, so if you have a personal real estate website, you can put that there for each of your listings. You can just make a blanket statement. Agent will co-op on there, but you can't put a specific amount that you're going to co-op um, on, on it. So you can just say that you're able and willing to do that. We can also put agent will co-op as a writer on our for sale signs at the listings. So Tanil and I have already taken the steps um, to make an order for some writers sign writers that say that says agent will co-op and we'll let you know um, when those will be in um, if you create a buyer's representation agreement and you have a signature from the buyer and you do not have any compensation in there then that means the buyer doesn't owe you any compensation um, so make sure that you are um 
that you're writing something in there. Um, don't just turn in a blank um, buyer's rep agreement form. Also, people, if you are charging an admin fee, you need to add that admin fee to your buyer's representation agreement. If you are charging the seller an admin fee, you need to add that to the listing agreement. If you um, are going to be paid from both sides, um, and let's just say you're the listing agent, obviously, so you're going to be paid from both sides. You cannot make a commission more than what you stated you were going to accept that listing for. So if you agree to a 4% commission, the seller is paying you 4%, you cannot go to the buyer who you also brought and ask them for 2%. Um, unless, obviously, you talk to both sides and you work that out be, uh, between them and you have to have that in writing that they agree. So they're going to be making sure and auditing us to be sure that we have these, these buyer's representation forms filled out. They're also going to be auditing us to make sure that we're not overcharging people. Um, there was a statement that was made or a question was asked, I should say, where they said, what if, you know, the listing agent um, has worked out a, a fee, a commission amount of, you know, 6% and they agreed to pay the buyer's agent 3%, but the buyer agent comes along and brings a buyer and the listing agent for whatever reason doesn't like that agent. And so they offer them 2%. They don't really have an answer for how they're going to combat that. I'm going to say to you guys as agents, um, don't let, don't lead these conversations um, with things like if the buyer, um, if the buyer agent or if the buyer isn't going to pay me, I'm not going to show that house. Don't say that. Don't, don't do that because um, that can get you in a lot of hot water, especially as it relates to, in terms of fair housing. Um, you really can't, we really don't have a workaround for that. Um, if your client is, um, if, the, if the listing agent is offering you less than what you think you should be paid, then you really do need to be having a conversation with your buyer about them paying you the difference um, and if they come up with some workaround where we can address that uh, more head on and with, you know, some good action, then I'll definitely share that. But there is no way for us to really know if the buyer or if the listing agent is paying us what the selling agent um, agreed with the seller that we would be paid. Um Make sure that um, you are having these conversations and getting your commission amounts worked out with these sellers before you go, or not sellers, but buyers, before you go down a really long road with them. I do want to point out to people, um, I had said this to somebody else earlier um, because, you know, I heard a lot of people in the, in the uh, meeting today saying Hey, you know, um, if they're not paying me enough, I'm not going to show the property um, and, and this sort of thing. So I want to remind people that there is an organization that has been around since the 90s. It's called the National Association of Exclusive Buyer Agents. Um, they have a lot of information on their website about um, things that you can... Um, things that you can um, say to your client about how you are getting paid and things of that nature. Um, the, the NABLE was formed, like I said, in the mid 1990s. Um, and so um, they are uh, the members of the of a NABA do not accept listings, advertise properties for sale or represent sellers at any time. They provide exclusive fiduciary duties to home buyers. 
um, neighbor, uh, neighbor members avoid the conflicts of interest that arise when the same firm attempts to represent both the buyer and the seller. Um, they actually have a, sta a standards and ethics um, and they are recommended uh, by lots of people. And so for those people out there who you know, want to say that, um, or who may feel like, you know, I'm going to stick it to the seller, the agent, or, you know, I'm going to, um, not show this property because I'm not making enough. Just know there is a legion of agents out there that specialize in just helping buyers. Um, and, uh, I heard today in the meeting that NAR has agreed to partner with those people, um, to help them um, to get in contact with more of these buyers in the event that they have um, issues uh, finding an agent that is willing to represent them. Um, and like I've been telling you guys before, this is not anything for us to really be alarmed about. We should have always been doing the things that we're being asked to do now. Um, I've always done them. I came from a world of real estate investing, um, where a lot of times the investors that I were working with were buying properties from people who couldn't afford to pay a commission. They had one of the four D's, debt, death, disease, or debt. Um, and um, they just couldn't afford a lot of it. So a lot of times the buyer, my buyer, which was the investor would pay my commission. And so I strongly urge you guys to um, just review all that you can about this, um, about um, this, uh, the changes. And like I said, before you make a mistake or if you're not sure about something, please reach out to me and ask me. I'll be happy to, to share any information that I have. And if I don't have the answer, I'll go get it. Um, I do want to encourage everybody to read the Realtors Confidence Index, index survey that came out um, at the end of July. That's kind of what I was going to talk about um, today. Uh, what those, um, what those results show us. Um, and I also uh, was um, going to um, share about a new. Um, well, it's really not new. It's just um, how can I say? It's not new. It's just another publication that talks about how realtors work in the community. Um, I wanted to um, introduce you guys to that. And finally, um, I wanted to stress to you guys the importance of now of really having open houses. Um, brokers open houses are great because you can get your colleagues to come out and give honest and true feedback about what's happening with the property or what they see about a property that, you know, may be hindering it from selling. Um, and then you can use that information to help your clients make better decisions about their marketing strategies. Um, I, I have a strong feeling that we're going to have more and more home buyers coming out um, to uh, look at open houses just because I feel like a lot of people are going to struggle um, somewhat with having to explain to these buyers, A, that they have to have a buyer's rep agreement before they show a property and B, that they may be having to pay them. So um, we'll see how all that falls, f falls out. I'm up to 23 minutes and 55 seconds now. So I am going to stop right there. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you have any questions or concerns um, about what I talked about, please feel free to reach out to me. Next week, I am going to incorporate some things for Arkansas and Mississippi into the podcast as well, because I do realize that we have agents in those states who really, 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 really need uh, some insight into what's happening there. And so I will bring that to you along with um, things that I wanted to talk about this week. I wish you guys a very, very safe and joyous weekend, and I will um, hope that you are all able to sell something. Until next time, take care of yourselves, and ta-ta!